Okay, now I was actually, um, for everyone to know, you know, I love being on YouTube. I, I, I'm like constantly on YouTube, so basically I'm addicted to it. And I just happened to see this weird video. Um, it's called Modern Day Cases of Humans Eating Other Humans. So I was shocked and I was like, you know what, I want to watch this. But at the same time, I want to do a reaction because, I mean, this is weird. But like I say, you know, um, only thing about it, you guys, it has like that robotic voice, the narrator, and it's kind of annoying a little bit. So if you don't want to watch it, you know, I'm, I totally understand. But like I said, this I really think this is an interesting video and let's get into it. at their core. It is widely considered that such a practice has no place in modern society. However, here are seven cases where it did happen. Number seven, David Playpens. It would appear that some acts of cannibalism occur out of simple curiosity. After he was involved in a motorcycle accident, one of David Playpen's fingers started turning black. After he went to the hospital, the doctors concluded that his finger had to be amputated. The procedure was completed successfully, and Playpen's asked to take his severed digit home with him. The doctors agreed. Playpen's had always had a taste for the extreme, and one of his curiosities also included cannibalism. He told reporters, I'd always wondered what human flesh tastes like, but it's taboo. People can't go around being cannibals. That's illegal. Only then it occurred to me that no one could haul me off to court for eating my own flesh. I decided to cook it and taste it. Then my curiosity would be satisfied. Playpen. Y'all, did y'all hear that? This guy always wanted to know how human meat tastes. So he went home and boiled his finger. Ew. Ins documented the whole process and posted it on his Facebook page. He even kept the bone as a token. Although he received mixed reactions from his friends and followers, he was not charged with anything. Number six. Oh man, that makes me want to throw up. That is disgusting. Oh my gosh. Mao Sugiyama. Some acts of cannibalism happen under extremely violent circumstances, while others take place by choice. This was the situation for Japanese man Mao Sugiyama. He described himself as being asexual, and before he turned 22. You know what? I really thought that was a woman. I really did. Sugiyama had his genitalia surgically removed. Afterwards, he organized a party in Tokyo, Japan, where he charged $250 a plate for those who wanted to taste his cooked genitalia. His what the heck? Did y'all hear that? Man, I didn't even know you can do stuff like that. This dude's charging $250 for y'all to taste him. Ugh. Penis, testicles, and scrotum skin had been prepared with Italian parsley and button mushrooms by Sugiyama himself under the supervision of a trained chef. The party took place at a music club, and out of the 70 people that were in attendance, five decided to try the unconventional meal. Initially, Sugiyama had considered eating the penis himself, but it was ultimately included in the menu and served up at the event. Number five, Omaima Ari Nelson. Omaima Ari moved to the U.S. from Egypt in 1986. In 1991, at the age of 23, she met William Nelson, a pilot who was 33 years older than her. Despite the age difference and the fact that they didn't know each other very well, they got married after only a few days. On Thanksgiving Day, 1991, Omaima reported that her husband had sexually assaulted her in their Costa Mesa, California apartment. In response to this, she stabbed him in the head with a pair of scissors before beating him to Oh, oh, oh my, oh, oh my gosh, you know what you guys, if you find out your husband or your wife is cheating on you, man, just leave them alone, because now, you know, if you go killing, if you go killing that person, 
Now you have to go to prison for that crap. Once it's done, it's done. This is crazy. Death with a clothing iron. After that, she removed his hands and boiled them in order to get rid of the fingerprints. Nelson's head was also cut off and left to boil in a pot. Parts of his body. Oh, you guys, I got to rewind this. Number five. Omaima Ari Nelson. Omaima Ari moved to the U.S. from Egypt in 1986. In 1991, at the age of 23, she met William Nelson, a pot left over Thanksgiving turkey. Omaima had told her psychiatrist that she had cooked and eaten her husband's ribs with bar- On Thanksgiving Day, 1991, Omaima reported that her husband had sexually assaulted her in their Costa Mesa, California apartment. In response to this, oh. she stabbed him in the head with a pair of scissors before beating him to death with a clothing iron. Okay, I understand. Okay. You guys want to apologize because she said that, okay, he said that she was sexually assaulted by her husband, so I guess that kind of freaked her out because, you know, at the time, you don't really know what was going on with her, but that's pretty sad. Iron. After that, she removed his hands and boiled them in order to get rid of the fingerprints. Nelson's head was also cut off and left to boil in a pot. Parts of his body were mixed with the leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Omaima had told her psychiatrist that she had cooked and eaten her husband's ribs with barbecue sauce. Whatever remained of Nelson's body, Omaima threw in the garbage disposal, which, according to reports from the neighbors, kept running long after the time of the man's death. As punishment for the abuse she had endured at the hands of her husband, Omaima also reportedly castrated him. In the trial that followed her arrest, it was revealed that during her childhood in Cairo, Omaima had been circumcised, which is why sex was particularly painful and traumatic for her. This had only been enhanced by Nelson's alleged abuse. Her sentence was 27 years to life in prison, and so far she has been denied parole on two occasions and will not be eligible again until 2026. Number 4. Armin Maywis. German man Armin Maywis has been tempted by cannibalism ever since he was a child. He told reporters that he daydreamed about it and had fantasies about slowly roasting one of his colleagues, just like a kebab. Years later, Maywis would get the opportunity. Oh my gosh. You, you, if you have a weak stomach, just be careful watching this because I'm seriously, man, I mean, this is, these stories are making me sick to my stomach. I just got through eating, so... Ugh. Ugh. Mm. ...to turn his dark desire into reality when he met 43-year-old Bern Brandis online. Brandis had posted an advert which offered people the chance to eat him alive. The first email that he sent Maywis read, I am your meat. After the two met, they went to Maywis' farmhouse and had sex. Afterwards, Brandis took 20 sleeping pills with a bottle of schnapps. According to Maywis, both men had a clear understanding of what was happening and what was about to happen, and that there was never a time when he breached his partner's consent. Maywis set up a camera to document the event. He cut off Brandis' penis, fried it, and then served it up so that both men could enjoy it. At this point, Brandis had already lost a lot of blood. While he was taking a bath, Maywis approached the tub, kissed him, and then slit his throat. Maywis then chopped his lover into pieces. <sighs> Are these stories real? Are these stories real, you guys? If they are real, you guys, please post below because... This stuff is unbelievable. Did, no way. Are these stories real? Oh my God. And put parts of him in his freezer, the head, and other remains he buried in the garden. Over the course of the next 10 months, he would frequently set the table with his finest cutlery and eat a meal which mainly consisted of his lover's flesh. By the time of his arrest, it was determined that Maywis had consumed more than 20 kilograms of human meat. He talked about the experience. The first bite was, of course, very strange. It was a feeling I can't really describe. I spent over 40 years longing for it, dreaming about it, and now I was getting the feeling that I was actually achieving this perfect interconnection through his flesh. Maywis became the first German man to be charged with love cannibalism and is currently serving life in prison. Number three, Catherine Knight. Catherine Knight is the only woman in the history of Australia to be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
before she committed the crime, which landed her the life sentence. She had had a history of spousal abuse. She tried to strangle her first husband, David Collette, on their wedding night for falling asleep after having intercourse with her only three times. Her possessive nature determined Kellett to leave her for another woman. As punishment, Knight left their two-month-old daughter, Melissa, on a railway as the train was due to arrive. Luckily, the infant was rescued in time. While she was involved with another man, David Saunders, she reportedly slashed the throat of a dingo pup in front of him as an example of what would happen to him should he ever have an affair or try to leave her. Knight then used a frying pan to knock the man out. Finally, in 1995, she moved in with John Price, a father of three who was reportedly well-liked by all those who knew him. Their relationship was a violent one, mainly due to Knight's violent temper and jealousy. On February 29th, 2000, Price took out a restraining order against Knight, fearing for the safety of his children. He also told his co-workers that if he didn't return to work the following day, it would be because she killed him. They pleaded with Price not to go back home, but he did, as he believed that Knight would murder his children in his absence. That same day, Catherine Knight had bought new black lingerie and had videotaped her children while making comments, which would later be identified as an indication of murderous intent. That night, the couple had intercourse and Price went to sleep. Later, while he was sleeping, Knight stabbed him with the butcher knife. According to the blood splatter analysis, Price had woken up, tried to escape, and even reached the front door of the house. But Knight dragged him back and attacked him a few more times before he ultimately bled out in the hallway. It was later determined that he had been stabbed at least 37 times, with many wounds extending to his vital organs. The next day, at approximately 6 a.m., their neighbors alerted the police after finding finding blood on the front door. When the police arrived on the scene, they found a most gruesome display. Knight had taken Price's skin and hung it on a meat hook on a lounge door. Price's severed head was found in a large pot with a few vegetables. Parts of his body had been cooked and arranged into two settings on the dinner table, with zucchini, cabbage, baked potato, pumpkin, and gravy as side dishes. Each of the plates had next to it a note addressed to one of Price's children. A third meal had been thrown out on the back lawn. It was suspected that Knight had hadn't been able to stomach it. Knight was found in a comatose state next to Price's body, which had been arranged with the legs crossed and the left arm draped over a soft drink bottle. It was found that Knight had ingested a large number of pills. Fortunately, the children were away at a sleepover, and Knight was arrested before they returned home. Number 2. The Malrova Case May 2007, a couple in Birno, Czech Republic had just installed a new baby monitor. However, when they turned on the machine, they saw the image of a naked young boy who had been bound and gagged. Their signal had intertwined with that of their neighbors, the Morova family. They recognized the boy. His name was Andre, and he was Clara Morova's eight-year-old son. The authorities were immediately alerted. When they arrived at the Morova residence, the police uncovered that Andre and his nine-year-old brother, Jacob, had been subjected to extreme abuse by members of their own family. Along with the two boys, the police also rescued a teenage girl named Anna. The boys' mother, Clara, and their aunt, Katrina, were members of a sinister religious cult called the Grail Movement. Before the boys could join the movement, their free will had to be taken away. They had endured severe torture for almost eight months before they were saved by police. The investigators found out that they had been chained up and left in pools of their own urine for days on end. Other times they were kept in cages or handcuffed to tables for long periods of time. Cigarette stubs were put out on their flesh and belts were used to whip them. At times, they were given knives and forced to cut themselves. The women and other cult members had reportedly also sexually abused the two boys. When their screams would become too loud, they would be gagged or held underwater until they approached the point of drowning. Andre was subjected to a particularly gruesome form of torture. He was skinned alive. Clara and Katrina tore the flesh from one of his arms and then ate the flesh along with other cult members. Some reports state that they had also forced some of the raw remains down Andre's throat. Fortunately, the baby mom monitor that they used to keep an eye on the victims was the same model as the one owned by their neighbors. Anna, the teenager who was found trapped together with the two boys, left the country for Norway immediately after her. Lord, I can't. That's, that's sad. That's really sad. Rescue. It was later discovered that she was, in fact, Barbara Sklova, a 34-year-old woman and a key figure in the Grail movement, who had also contributed to the torture of the two boys. She was later apprehended. 
During the trial, Clara admitted her guilt, but claimed that Barbara and her sister had manipulated her, and also that a cult member, only known as the Doctor, was sending them details on how to torture the children. For the torture of her own children, Clara Marova only received a nine-year sentence, Katrina got ten, and Barbara Sklova got five. Number one, the Miami Zombie. Underneath a tram bridge in Miami, Florida, a homeless man, Ronald Puppo, was the victim of a vicious cannibalistic attack. Rudy Eugene was a 31-year-old divorced former high school football player with a rap sheet that included a number of petty criminal arrests. On the morning of May 26, 2012, after abandoning his Chevrolet Caprice, Eugene started to make his way across the MacArthur Causeway, stripping himself of his clothes along the way. By the time he encountered the 65-year-old Ronald Popo, he was already completely naked, having removed all items of clothing, including his shoes. Initially, he approached the man in a friendly manner, but before long, Eugene began to shout at him, accusing him of stealing his Bible. He then unleashed a savage attack on Popo, hitting him repeatedly until the old man lost consciousness. After that, the enraged assailant gouged Popo's eyes out, removed his pants, and started eating away at his face. The attack was captured on nearby security cameras and lasted for 18 minutes before the police arrived on the scene. Once he was present on site, Officer Jose Ramirez warned Eugene to desist from the attack. Not only did Eugene ignore the officer's warnings, but he also reportedly growled at him before going back to biting Popo's face. After Ramirez's first shot proved to be ineffective, another four shots followed, which eventually killed Eugene. Popo survived the ordeal, but at a great loss. The attack left him blind in both eyes and horribly disfigured. Most of the facial tissue above his beard had been chewed up, and even though he underwent reconstruction surgery, most of the damage was permanent. He lost his nose, eyebrows, and parts of his cheeks and forehead. Eugene's family and friends couldn't provide investigators with the reason for his actions, although it was suspected that bath salts might have been involved. The horrific nature of the attack caused Rudy Eugene to be remembered as the Miami Zombie. Okay, you guys. I did not know that video was going to be that graphic, but that was, like I said, if these stories are real, you guys, please let me know because that is crazy. I mean, I can't believe this, but that just, this just shocks the, the hell out of me. <laughs> that just shocks me. You know, I can't believe people are, are actually enjoy eating other people. I mean, cooking them up and stuff. I'm, oh my gosh. You know what? God bless the vegetarians. That, that's all I can say. But anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I am sorry. It was very, very graphic. I didn't know it was going to be that graphic, but I should have known because it did say uh, people eating other people. But anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, thank you for watching. I love you, YouTube. Bye.